I'm Alexandra Wolf. I'm with the Society for the Preservation of Long Island Antiquities. Um, I'm so glad that Tom talked a little bit about um, Robert Moses in the broader sense. Um, I'm going to talk specifically about Jones Beach um, and talk about this idea of um, open space and design landscape <coughs> in the suburbs. So here, a wonderful photo of Jones Beach, um, brainchild of Robert Moses, born out of the progressive era ideals, uh, where government was responsible for providing public benefit. It's the first time an heroic scale is applied to a seaside recreational facility, and it was an instant success when it opened in 1929, and it remains one of the best attended parks in the New York State Park system. So I'm pointing that way. Uh, for those of you who don't know where Jones Beach is, um, 34 miles from Manhattan on a barrier island on the south shore of Long Island in the county of Nassau, um, right here on the star, um, incorporates uh, 2,413 seaside acres, six miles of Atlantic beachfront, and about half a mile of frontage on what is known as Zacks Bay on the south sh in the Great <coughs> South Bay area. Um, opened in 1929, but was conceived in 1925, and part of an extensive regional system of public parks connected by parkways, which were executed under the Long Island State Park Commission. A lot of the, um, oops, a lot of the, the roadways here are all parkways that were c uh, created under Moses. So Southern State, uh, Wampaw, Meadowbrook, Northern State, a couple of others on the East End. Um, designed to serve an urban population, and it hinged on the construction of the Southern State Parkway, which was the former watershed of the Brooklyn Water Works. Uh, development for the entire region was very active in 1925, uh, between 1925 and 1935. So this sort of precedes the city work uh, that Moses did. Um, interestingly, um, and I find this extraordinary, by 1936, um, Moses had opened 12 parks on Long Island and 12 parkways and also was working on the Triborough Bridge in New York City. I, I find that astounding in terms of like how big this public works was. Um, he essentially completes his, the bulk of his work on Long Island uh, when he resigned from the Long Island State Park Commission, Moses had opened four more parks and two more parkways. Um, creating Jones Beach, and, and I'm sort of, I think I'm gonna, I, I realize this is sort of like a case study in preservation. So as we move forward, think about issues that, you know, these are the design elements that go into creating Jones Beach, and then what are some of the issues going forward in terms of it being an historic site or becoming an historic site. So Jones Beach, gargantuan undertaking in terms of administration, engineering, planning, and design. Um, I think this image really captures just the, the order in, in, of the planning of this park. You have um, the main, uh, this is the West Bath House, the Central Mall, and then the East Bath House. Um, this is part of the, um, what the first of three major building phases uh, that led to the creation of Jones Beach happens between 1926 and 1934. This is when these principal elements are completed. Um, the main structures, roads, a lot of the landscape features. Um, between 1934 and 43, this is the post-depression enhancements. Um, this is where you would find the WPA work. And then the next phase, 1943 to 54, where there's rehabilitation, sort of re, um, uh, imp um, you know, just sort of fixing up things that had sort of declined and also the opening of the West End Beaches, which was about an additional two miles on the west side of the beach. Um, the water tower, symbol of the park's planning and vision, in my opinion. It's coordinating the aesthetics of recreational experience with infrastructure and management needs. So you have the water tower, which is the physical epicenter of the park. It's the park beacon. You see this from, you know, miles when you're traveling on the Wantor or the Meadowbrook, which are the, the, point, the ways to Jones Beach. It's also a traffic manager. So it's, the, it's sort of organizing the, the, the movement of traffic. And I should mention also these used to be, just bear in mind, these used to be um, uh, decorative water features. They were pools, <laughs> which are now uh, grassed over. Um, and it's also a water container. So the, the water tower holds all the water that served Jones Beach. Uh, here, the Central Mall, the Grand Welcome on access with the, the water tower. Here's your Beaux-Arts planning, the city beautiful, which is brought to a beach. 
never before done. Um, and I should note the formal landscaping. This is extraordinary for a beach today and was so then as well. Um, here, this sort of hedging that lines, um, sort of divides and identifies the changing in spaces and uses. Architecture, well-built, high style, never used at a beach before. Um, the National Register report, which was only written up in, the, in 2005, identified 22 contributing buildings and 33 structures. Uh, we have the West Bath House, the East Bath House. This is a cafeteria which is unrecognizable today on the Central Mall. And this is the um, police headquarters built in 1937. This is one of the big projects with uh, WPA money. Um, and then color and texture. I've been showing you black and white images up until now. Um, natural materials and colors to create a very distinct palette, um, evoking the sea and sand, alludes to exotic places. Um, the execution and assembly is luxurious. Um, I'll, I'll point out the hydrangeas. These are hydrangeas at the beach. If anyone has these plants, you know how much water they take. Extraordinary. Um, here, uh, this is a glazed brick. It has variation in the tone and texture. These are all subtleties that are really important in terms of design of this, of this public facility. Um, this is, um, these are the decorative and artistic details that enhance this overall nautical theme. Um, there is a series of mosaics that are out throughout the park that kind of you know, create surface on the pedestrian ways. There is the, um, the boardwalk that is meant to evoke a sense of the ocean liner at the beach. Um, this is the, uh, the, oh, I'm forgetting what these, this, these are the garbage can containers, uh, ship's funnels. They're supposed to be ship's funnels. This, I used to think this was, um, I, I, was, I was corrected on what this thing is. It's a water fountain and it's used to uh, roll up ropes originally. Um, at one point there was a mahogany railing all throughout this boardwalk. It was since replaced with aluminum because the maintaining the mahogany rail was just too much for the parks department to deal with. And then we have our, this wonderful whimsical signage. This is actually a reproduction. There's a few of them from when Jones Beach had its 75th anniversary. Um, so what we have is a highly organized facility that provides resort activities for a general public. Um, one of the interesting things that is, uh, that appears in a lot of Moses' um, parks is the separation of the recreational activity from uh, infrastructure and travel. So you have the parking and you know, the park sort of functioning on the north side of Ocean Parkway and then all the recreation happens on this end. Um, if you noticed in the earlier images that Tom showed of Reese Park, there's this sort of embracing pavilion that comes up in Moses' work all the time. He has it in the paving and the boardwalk features over here and here. You see that in Reese Park and o Orchard Beach as well. Um, other things that are worked out, I mean, this happens, like Jones Beach is kind of, in my, in, at least in my mind, is the, is the, is the precedent. It's, the, it's the, um, the place where these ideas are, are worked out and then he takes them to his city projects. Um, so there's the formal, um, um, and the ceremonial arrival space. There's always the Grand Mall in a lot of these uh, parks. And you saw that in, in Reese, where you have the long uh, planted uh, way. There's also the separation where the parking lots are set apart from where all of the fun is supposed to happen. And then you have the natural setting at the edges. Um, and so what you have, excuse me, is a three-way relationship where you have a design landscape that includes structures and artistic details interacting with a natural setting and both are impacted by park user. You have to bear in mind, you know, Jones Beach is continuously used as a, as a uh, public beach. Over time, there is an evolution in priorities. For example, the environmental interests and concerns are later um, in, the early, in the 20s and 30s. You know, the, the issue of um, estuary health and habitat were not as pressing as they are now. And these are factors that complicate preservation at a facility like this. Um, another issue is that the Parks Department is a bureaucracy and there's a whole system of hierarchy that they need to go through and they are focused primarily on maintaining Jones Beach as a public beach. And this means that 
Their main priority is to keep it safe, clean, and servicing the users. And in the face of diminishing funds, and if all of you are not aware of this, um, the Parks Department, I think, is looking at $6 billion in, ca in deferred capital need. So the idea of design integrity falls very low on their list. Um, another complicating factor is that Jones Beach grew into its historic significance during continuous operation. Um, it was eventually determined National Register eligible, but nobody went through the, the, the course of developing a master plan to guide major capital improvements, and there was no pr formal protocol to include preservation practice and general maintenance. And what you have is you have the main office in Albany, and you have a regional office on Long Island, and depending on the type of project, they don't always have to coordinate. So you add diminished funds to parks generally, and this habituated uh, maintenance program, uh, which is primarily focused on delivering recreational services, and you end up seeing a stripping away of design elements. So for what, for what is for preservationists a critical to the overall experience becomes really not so essential from the park's maintenance perspective. So if we look at this image, this is the north side of the um, East Bath House. You see these wonderful brackets that decorate the edges, this wonderful light fixture light fixtures here. Um, this is this guardrail, the hedge, you know, organizing these spaces, telling people, um, you know, where, where you walk, where you go, what's decorative, all that stuff, over time becomes this. It gets stripped away. <laughs> Ta-da! I have so many of these, but I had to keep them really, really tight because I've only got 10 minutes. So, SPLIA, my organization, first brought this to light in 2001, and we, def we called this the results of deferred maintenance and inappropriate alterations. This is the Parks Department just doing like the, the course of least resistance and the cheapest way of maintaining this so that the public can still use it. Uh, it's a systematic decline that begins in the 60s after Moses uh, is ousted from his various appointments. And, um, and when the Jones Beach Parkway Authority is eliminated. That was like a, fin a, a money funnel for um, um, Jones Beach, um, because this was always a beach, a, a facility that was very expensive to maintain, because it was basically like his, you know, the jewel of the whole Long Island system. Again, looking at this from landscape features and the elements, um, we have this wonderful uh, brick paving. We again have the guardrails, the signage, the lights. It's all part of a piece. It's this complete landscape gets reduced to that where, again, and a lot of these decisions is about driving lawnmowers. They don't want to go around guardrails to deal with mowing the lawn and just sort of taking care of your basic needs at this park. Um, this is interesting um, case, well, an interesting situation. The park's um, narrow focus makes managing the facilities for changing use patterns over the long term difficult. Um, they're not really thinking about the original plan when they modify structures. So this West Bath House, for instance, originally, you could enter from the north uh, side of the pavilion. You could walk through to these changing areas. Um, this was the concession stand at the bottom level and then the marine dining room. And then there was a uh, mezzanine area that ran all around. Um, there was egress from various points to the pool area, and you could walk from this point through. Uh, Kitty Pool and uh, the, the main pool. At a certain point, Parks Department wanted to collect additional fee for entrance to the pool, and they closed off a lot of the egress in this building, and what you ended up getting was dead space. There's also the change in cultural habits, um, which affects how um, the use, or the, the, the change in cultural habits uh, leads to um, a, a deterioration because it ends up creating um, spaces that are no longer um, functional. So the changing booths, we don't come to the beach fully clothed and change, so all of this now becomes space that it doesn't really serve um, a purpose anymore. So this was removed, and now the, the Parks Department just uses it for storage and you know, raises the issue, what do you do with a large historic structure that no longer serves its original program? And how do you maintain them with limited funds? So the Parks Department turns to more private sector involvement. Um, they, originally, there were several food options at Jones Beach that were run by Parks Department. Um, they now work with the concessionaire. Um, here, this was pointed out by Splee in 2001, the friendly sign, really not what Moses would have intended. 
After we brought um, this, this reality up to the parks department, they, they kind of modified it and did a more sort of appropriate sign. But friendlies, the concessionaire still feels like they need the red sign to drive people to the, um, the uh, ice cream parlor that's on the second floor. And I think the big issue here is the ice cream parlor really isn't a place that you want to go to because it's ill-suited to the space it occupies. And also, they're charging you $5 for an ice cream. Like, come on. You know, like, that's why you're not getting traffic in there. Plus, the smell of the french fries is revolting. <laughs> so I think those are the issues, really. Um, and then there's this. And you know, we should pick on Trump, because he's a bad guy sometimes. Um, this issue, um, 2006, this, this, I think, really talks. Oh, and I should mention also, there's the uh, Nikon Theater. Um, that's another incident where there's this turning to concessionaires, um, turning to the private sector, and, and without a, um, sort of guidelines to manage how they use and occupy these spaces, you're always going to run into trouble. And I, I'm, you know, Splee has looked at a, the state parks at a, and historic sites within state parks throughout Long Island, and this is a recurring theme. And I, it seems to me that um, the Parks Department sort of sells their resources cheap, and they don't realize the value. So this instance, this was Trump coming in to do a new restaurant. The scope and scale of this thing was too big for the park to begin with. There was a lot of pushback from the community that was unexpected. They were going to take a part of this pitch putt uh, course, about an acre for a parking lot. Um, this was a Newsday uh, proposal. This was one of the iterations. This is held up now over an occupied basement, and it's in the Court of Appeals. And so we've had a hole in the ground at Jones Beach since about 19, uh, 2005, I think. Um, another route that the Parks Department is coming into is encouraging friends groups to partner with them. And so this is a Spalia project where we're cultivating a, lo a friends group, Jones Beach Rescue, to sort of assist in fundraising and become an advocate. And, you know, I think the reality, though, is that these are, you know, th there's so much need there, and it's really a, a haul, or it's a, it's a heavy demand. It's a heavy lift for volunteers to, to, you know, do this stuff. So Jones Beach Rescue is looking to fund projects that really connect with the user experience. Um, this is their first project, restoration of the um, Central Mall mosaics. This is a map of Long Island. Um, and it identifies all of the state parks. Um, it's very whimsical. It's a slate, colored concrete with um, a brass uh, detail. Um, and you know, it's it's a it's a manageable fundraising initiative. But it's you know, 200,000 for a we're estimating for um, um, a mosaic restoration when a building like the West Bathhouse needs millions. So it's there's a lot of stuff going on and. Um, I'll close with this image. I often talk about Jones Beach and forget to show images of the beach itself. So <laughs> here we go. Um, and, and, I, and I close with a quote from Mumford because I think these are things that moving forward are, you know, someone somewhere needs to start thinking about this. And, you know, Splia and Jones Beach Rescue are, are starting that dialogue. But it's that every spot that is architects and planners touched bears the mark of highly rational purpose intelligent design and aesthetic form. Thank you.